This was the year the recession was supposed to end. But as the year ends, the long-awaited economic recovery is still a tiny speck. Some would say just a mirage on the economic horizon. Twelve months ago, the government's main concerns were interest rates and inflation. Today, interest rates and inflation are down, but nearly two million Canadians are out of work. The nation is in its worst economic crisis in 50 years, and no one knows when it will end. Well, I mean, you cut, a, cut back on the grocery bill quite a bit, and cut down on the heat and clothing. Getting married in July, and I don't even know if I got a job. I feel rotten, but what can you do? The current crisis began when Ronald Reagan decided to drive inflation out of the American economy. He raised interest rates. Economic growth slowed down, then stalled completely. As we stand here, 11.3 million Americans cannot find the jobs that they need to pay their bills and to feed their families. Across America, business ground to a halt. And because our two economies are so totally interrelated, the effect was quickly felt here in Canada. If they're not building houses in Boston, they're not cutting timber in BC. And the impact was the same right across the economy. The litany of layoffs, business failures and bankruptcies is staggering. Small firms that had been in business more than a century were forced to close their doors. Large modern companies in fields like communications and aviation were forced to lay off workers. And in some cases, whole towns were shut down because the worldwide recession had killed the demand for Canadian products. The term bailout came into use in the Canadian vocabulary as government was forced to provide financial guarantees to keep some of Canada's biggest companies from going bankrupt. 